happy Sabbath to all of you in TV land watching us here at the Bellevue Seventh-day Adventist Church right here on Tortola, British Virgin Islands. Many of you tune in week after week and we want to thank you for joining us this week again as we go into our lesson study this morning. We are in a new quarter. We have new quarterlies. And this quarter's title is The Three Cosmic Messages. So we will start off this morning looking at the first lesson. I am Shauna K. Miller Powell. Beside me is Sister Lizette Matthew. And beside her is Brother Charles. We are going to begin... Uh, before we do, of course, we're going to pray as we usually do. And I'm going to ask Sister Matthew to open us with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that has been granted to us to study your word. Help us as we go through the lesson study that somebody out in radio audience, TV audience, internet world will be blessed and we too will be blessed Continue to bless us and keep us. These are the mercies we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As was said a while ago, we are on our new quarterly. Lesson one of the quarterly, Three Cosmic Messages. And this lesson is entitled, Jesus Wins, Satan Loses the Battle Amen. in Heaven. Jesus Wins. Satan loses the battle in heaven. You know, this evening when I got home, my husband was telling me about a shooting, a school, another school shooting in Tennessee, there in the United States. And there's a lot happening around us. And a lot of people will question, how did we get here? How did we arrive at this stage and at this state in our world? Where did all this evil come from? How did we arrive here? How, how, how are humans becoming so callous and evil towards each other? Unfortunately, not everyone believes the same thing, but as Bible believers, we are of one idea that evil originated one place and one person is responsible for the origin of sin and evil. And this morning, we look at that individual right in the title. Jesus wins, Satan loses the battle in heaven. A couple of weeks, our pastor here preached a powerful sermon Reminding us that we are, as Christians, as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, we tend to forget that we are in a never-ending battle here on earth. And sometimes we become so comfortable, too comfortable in fact, because we forget that we are not fighting against the brother and sister in church. Our battle is with beings that we cannot see. As the Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh or, uh, and blood, but against principalities. Now, our memory text, uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And we're going to turn to that quickly. It says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The dragon. So there are a couple things we need to identify. A lot of persons don't like, and denominations don't like to look at the, the, the book of Revelations. Because it seems like a scary book. And with a lot of... Um, Code language yeah. <laughs> that many can't understand. But we are a part of a prophetic church. So a lot of us growing up would have been introduced to prophetic language. Now, 
Who is known as the dragon here? Anybody? Who is known as the dragon? Devil. Satan. And who is known as the woman according to prophetic language? Mm, the church. church. The church. Mm. And we're going to look at a scripture later on uh, to identify who the dragon really is, as was stated. That the dragon here, Satan, was wroth with the woman, the church. And he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, it is no surprise, as said earlier, that sin, sin started where? In heaven. In heaven. In heaven. <laughs> it, it almost sounds impossible to yes, say. Yes. But sin started in heaven. Heaven was a perfect place. It was a perfect place with perfect beings. But how is it that in a perfect place, sin could come about just so? The question has been asked. I've, I've had students who asked me um, that question. Now, Satan, we know the story well, and according to scripture and according to the spirit of prophecy, that he became immensely jealous of the throne of God. And he wanted the place of Jesus Christ. And what, what, what started to bubble in his heart was envy. And pride. Envy and pride. And so he started to whisper to the angels, to the angelic hosts. And he was, you know, he got some on his side. And, on, and, and some, of course was on the side of Jesus. So even in heaven, there was choice and there was freedom, freedom, yeah, freedom. to choose. Yes, Looking at the great controversy, page 430. Yes, we, we have been giving out a lot of these books here to our visitors and in our community. And um, for those who are watching, if you don't have this book in your household, You'd really want to get a copy. The Great Controversy. Page 430. It says, The law of love being the foundation of the government of God, the happiness of all created beings dependent, depended upon their perfect accord with its great principles of righteousness. This part says God desires from all his creatures the service of love. Homage that springs from an intelligent appreciation of his character. Intelligent appreciation of his character. He takes no pleasure in a forced allegiance. And to all he grants freedom of will that they may render him voluntary service. Yes. Even in heaven... The angels had a choice. And unfortunately, Lucifer, who became Satan, Lucifer chose evil and chose not to serve God as he was created to do, and just like us today. So even the angels, as we said in heaven, were given a choice because God does not, he didn't create robots he doesn't want that. He, he, he wants, you know, love is not shown in forcing people yeah, free will. what to do, where to go, how to. That's control. And God did not create robots. He created intelligent beings to use the gift of and freedom of thinking in order to make a wise choice. Yes, and that passed on to 
the descendants of the earth, Adam and Eve, and then they Amen. eventually fell as well because they had the gift of choice just like we have today. True. And, and so in our world, a lot of persons choose to live otherwise rather than to, according to the scriptures and according to the principles of God. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 9. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 9. It says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Meaning they had no place there again because... Sin had now entered heaven and God had to get rid of it. And the great dragon was what? Cast, Cast out. out that old serpent called the devil. So here we have the answer of who the dragon is being referred to in scripture. It says, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called oh, the devil. devil. And Satan, which deceiveth the whole mm -hmm. world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So, the first war didn't take place here on earth. The first war took place in heaven, unfortunately. And God had to do a massive wipeout. Because sin cannot dwell in the presence of God. And so he had to... Cast Satan and where did, unfortunately, in, of mm -hmm. all the worlds, mm -hmm. of all mm -hmm. the worlds, Satan came right here on earth. I don't know what he saw, <laughs> but he's right here. And then he became known as the, as the prince of this world. Mm. So this is where evil and sin began. And we get a gist and understanding of why our world is the way it is. I want us to remember, folks, that Satan has already lost. Yes. Satan has already lost. Let's go back to the scripture. It says, verse 8, and prevailed not. It starts off like that. Don't forget it. And prevailed not. The war in heaven he did not win. And the war that we are fighting, the spiritual war right now, because our flesh is, a, is fighting every day to choose between good and evil. Because we are descendants of sin. The Bible says we are born and shaped in iniquity. We are born sinners. But God gave us the gift and the freedom to choose. And it is up to us to make the wise choice just as he gave the beings in heaven. He, he has given us the, 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 the free will to choose him. He's not going to force us, but his will is for us to choose him. Um, going back to the great controversy, page 434. Reading the last part, and then I'm going to wrap up. Even when it was decided that he could no longer remain in heaven, infinite wisdom did not destroy Satan. Since the service of love can alone be acceptable to God, the allegiance of his creatures must rest upon a conviction of his justice and benevolence. The inhabitants of heaven... And of other worlds, being unprepared to comprehend the nature or consequences of sin, could not then have seen the justice and mercy of God in the destruction of Satan. Had he been immediately blotted from existence, they would have served God from fear rather than from love. Hmm. I, I remember... Answering, you know, my, my students, you know, similarly, when they asked about Adam and Eve, 
You know, God could have created another, just wiped them out and just create another. Why didn't he? Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have been showing his, his character. His character is love and mercy. Of course he could have. But his character is love and mercy. And at the end of the day, he wants us to serve him out of love rather than fear. And the world's at that time, if he had blotted out Satan, man, they would have been fearful of him and worshipped him out yes, of that yes. instead of love. Because at that time, as the word says, they could not comprehend the consequences of sin because that was a new thing to them. They were used to perfection, a perfect world. What was sin? So imagine God just wiping out Satan. And they would have been fearful. My God, he could do this. Man, I have to serve him. I don't want the same thing to happen to me. But, but God in his wisdom did not destroy Satan. Mm -hmm. Because his character is love and mercy. And he wants all of us to serve him out of choice rather than out of fear. Let us choose to serve Jesus today. Be mm -hmm. Remember that Satan has already lost that battle and it is up to us now how we can win is by choosing to be on the winning side that is the only way to win just choose to be on the winning side and we can do that only by the grace and mercy of God amen amen amen, amen. amen. We look at Monday's lesson. Monday's lesson is entitled Satan's Attack. And we already know that the dragon, another name for the dragon is Satan or the devil. Now we go into Revelation 12, 4, and 5. And it reads, its tail sweep a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and his throne. What does that mean? Let's dig in some more. We already know what the dragon, who the dragon is. Now we're talking about a woman. A woman in Bible prophecy means church. True. The Amen. church, a woman in Bible prophecy means church. And it said that she gave birth to a male child. Mm -hmm. Who was this male child? This male child was Jesus, Jesus. Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. And yes. he ruled with an iron scepter. Mm -hmm. Iron scepter, you know what an iron scepter is? We know that that means it had dominion, it had rulership. It was, iron is something that's unbreakable. Have any, any of you tried breaking iron? Iron is powerful. It's mm -hmm. invincible. Okay? It says that at, from the time of Christ's birth, the angel, the, the Mary and Joseph were warned about a plan, a plot to kill Christ. And this is where they moved from one place to the next so that Christ could have been born. Now, even in the wilderness, when Jesus was tempted... What did he say? He responded by saying, it it's is written. written. It is written. We shall not live by bread, bread alone, but by the word. It is written. Everything he quoted, he quoted with. It is written. Right. That was the foundation of his message. Mm -hmm. We go further in, and we already talked about the rod of iron. And remember that the Bible said that a rod is a symbol of dominion or rulership. A rod of iron is a symbol of unbreakable, all-powerful, invincible rulership. Jesus faced every single temptation that we experience today. Yes. He came off as a conqueror, and we too can be conquerors right. in Christ Jesus. Now, it says that Christ has triumphed over himself in his life, death, and resurrection. So, he, he went through life as we are living he died so that we can have eternal life, and he's, he is resurrected. Because Jesus has already defeated the devil on Calvary's cross, we can be victorious. 
How many of you want to be victorious? Ella Charles, you want to be victorious? Yes, we want to be victorious in Christ. Amen. We have this blessed assurance. Now, some supporting texts that they talk about here. I'm going to read one which talks, comes from Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. And it reads, Husbands, Husbands loves your, wives. love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, mm -hmm. to make her holy, cleansing her by washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church mm -hmm. without stain or wrinkle or any blemish, but holy and blameless. Mm -hmm. Now, this church, when we sit and we study some more, we're going to look at it and we would discover that we have two types of church. There's a pure church without spot and wrinkle, no blemishes, and then mm -hmm. there's a corrupt church. Mm -hmm. So as we go into it some more, we'll discover these two. Two churches some more. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then in Mon Tuesday's lesson, in Tuesday's lesson, it talks about accepting Jesus' victory. Accepting Jesus' victory. Jesus has never lost a battle with Satan. We've already heard that he tried in heaven. Right. It didn't work. He is here on earth. He's trying to win a battle. But mm -hmm. once we stick with Jesus we know who will be the winner man. Yes. Yes. He is the victor over powers of evil. It is wanting to believe that Jesus was victorious over temptations of Satan. But it is quite another to believe that Christ's victory is our victory as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have yes. to walk it. We have to claim that Jesus is the victory. Okay. Now, further down in the lesson, it talks about seven times... Seven churches. Now it talks about these seven churches in the book of Revelation. Seven times, seven churches. Seven times in Revelation's message to the seven churches, we find the expression, he who overcomes. And how can we be overcomers? Can we be overcomers in our own strength? No. No, no we, have to, we have to rely on God for everything. Mm -hmm. The word overcome in the original language is niko. Now, it literally means to translate, to conquer, to prevail, to triumph, to come through victoriously. Now, how is it possible for us to be victorious? How is that possible? According to Revelation 12, 11, we have to be washed the by the blood of the, of the Lamb in order mm -hmm. to be overcomers. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it goes further in and it talks about faith, faith in Christ and what Christ has done for us to cancel our death. He went on Calvary's cross. Yes. All we have to do is accept. Amen. It's a power of choice. He yes. doesn't force his will on us. He gives us that power of choice. Amen. So as we go, continue to study, let us remember that we're not victorious on our own, but we are can be victorious through Christ. Amen. Amen. And we continue with Wednesday. It talks about the woman in the wilderness. And we can ask the question, we have already learned that woman in prophecy in Daniel and Revelation, it means a church. Mm -hmm. And Sister Matthew quoted a text talking Ephesians, husband, love your wife as Christ, Christ loved, loved the church, the church right. and gave himself for, for her. her. Mm -hmm. So it's a woman. Right. Right? The church is in Revelation, the woman in the wilderness means the church in the wilderness. But what was the church doing in the wilderness? Okay? When we study prophecy, we realize that after Christ ascended into heaven, and the angels and, and the, the disciples were empowered with God's Holy Spirit. Okay? I want us to realize that it started preaching about Jesus, which was a strange message to the people, mm. right? So while they were preaching, remember the text in, in Revelation 12, 6, it says that, and the woman fled into the wilderness mm. where, she had a play, where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there 
for a thousand two hundred and three score days. I want us to look at the days, okay? The time is a thousand two hundred and three score days. And then if you turn to Revelation, Revelation 13, 5, it says, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And the power and power was given unto him to continue 42, 42 months. months. Okay. And Daniel 7.25 says, And he shall speak, speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, mm -hmm. and think to change time and laws. Mm -hmm. And they were given, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times mm -hmm. and divided mm -hmm. of times. Mm -hmm. It simply means here that these three times, if you look at it, in Revelation 12, 6, it talks about the, how, how long the woman in the wilderness for 1,260 1, days. Mm -hmm. Okay? 42 months, it's the same time period. Right? Yes. 42 months, you multiply 42 by 360, mm -hmm. and you will get 1,360 days. Okay? And a time in, in prophecy... A day is a year. Right. Okay, we'll find that. I don't have time to look at it, but you can find that in Numbers 14.34 and Ezekiel 4.6. Anytime God is talk, talking in Revelation and Daniel in a prophetic language, a day is a year. Right. So we have 1,260 years. years. The same time period that the beast was ruling. It was called the Dark Ages. ages. Mm -hmm. Google it. You'll see where the Christians were persecuted for Jesus. Some were thrown to lion. Yes. Some were burnt in cave. Some were the Wallianses. The history tells us that when they, they, when they were hiding, right, the, the soldiers smoked them and they died singing because they believed in Revelation 2.10. Be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crown of life. Right? So they yes. wasn't afraid of this earthly death because they believed in the second coming. They had experienced the resurrection of Christ. Then we had Lutama, Lutama and those other guys that, were, that were, 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 were burned to the stake. Right? Remember now, God had placed the church in the wilderness where she was nourished. So nobody couldn't preach about Christ in those days. It was the dark ages. Okay? God was taking care of his people there. Yeah. So while we see that God was taking care of his, the church, even though some were martyred, some faithful believers were martyred, they, they died with the blessed hope. Right. They died with the blessed hope. Okay? And after that now, after the 1260 days ended, we need to realize it started in 539, 539 mm -hmm. and ended in 1798, where history tells us that the Pope was taken captive by, Fre by French Berthier, French General Berthier, in the year 1798, and the Dark Ages was over. Now, what happened after 1798? We realize that God's time, God and time remnant. After yes. 1798, the church came out of the wilderness. Yes. I want us to realize that before 1798, within that dark period, the church was in hiding. God was preparing his church. Mm -hmm. After 1798, the church came out, right? And they had to go over because remember in those times, Bibles were taken away from them, right? They had to go over and start and start studying over, studying over what God's message was for his last day remnant people. The Bible says that the dragon was wroth with the woman in Revelation 12, 17, and went to make war with a remnant of the seed. That is the last day people. That, and that, the remnant of the seed, the Bible says, are those that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay? So we see that 
two criteria that the last day church has. One, they keep the commandments of God. Yes. And two, they testify about the goodness of Jesus. Yes. Okay? We need to realize as we study, we need to realize that there are four episodes in Daniel, in Revelation 12, that Satan tries to conquer Christ. First, we had rebellion in heaven. Yes. War in heaven. Mm -hmm. Satan loses. Okay? We had Satan attempting to destroy Christ as a baby. Mm -hmm. He loses. Yes. Right? We had Satan attacking God's people in the dark ages. Mm -hmm. The church was in the wilderness, secured in God's arm. Satan loses. Yes. And fourth, Satan will again try to attack God's people in these last days. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Think about it. If Satan didn't get through with Christ, who would he come after? Hmm. It's obvious he would come after God's people, which is you and I. Yes. He will use all his strength and all his power to conquer us. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell us, tell you that the key thought of the lesson this week is Christ win, Satan, Satan loses. loses. And we must mm -hmm. always have that in our mind that we know the end of the chapter. Right. The end of the chapter is that Christ is victorious. Right. So no matter what we are going through, remember that the theme for this quarter is what? Cosmic, cosmic messages. Three, three, cosmic three, messages. three cosmic messages. It means to say, Revelation 14, 6 to 12 says, the last, the three cosmic messages is a message going to the whole universe right. to fear God and give yeah. glory to him. Mm -hmm. For the oh, awe of his, his judgment, judgment is come. Is come. That mm -hmm. is the message. That is the three cosmic message. Once we believe that Christ is victorious, Satan is a loser, and we are anchored in Christ, then we would tell others the three cosmic message is to fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. There are challenging times ahead. God's people will face their greatest test in the final day of earth's history. But we can face our future trials with a supreme confidence that in Christ, through Christ, and because of Christ, we too can be victorious. Amen. So friends, no matter what you are going through tonight as a Christian, I want to, to encourage you to keep your eyes focused on God. Amen. Christ has already won the victory. Mm -hmm. Victory belongs to us. Right? Sister Matthew quote a nice text there in Revelation 12, 11. He said, and they overcome him by the what? By the blood, blood of, the, of lamb, the lamb and by the word of their testimony. testimony yes. And they love not their self unto death. Mm -hmm. It means to say that to be an overcomer, we have to be washed in Jesus' yeah. blood. Yes. Right? To remain an overcomer, we have to testify mm -hmm. about the goodness of God. What God has been doing to, to, with us, what God has been doing in us, and what, can God, what God can do through us. Yes. Okay? And then, when it comes to, be, to standing up, even if we are faced with death, Yes, which we should right. remain faithful. Right. We have a lot of matters that gone before. All the disciples, they, 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 they were martyred except John the Revelator. Mm. Every one of them died because why? They had experienced, they, 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 had, they had seen the resurrection of Christ. Mm. So this death, this mere sleep in the grave was nothing to them. Mm -hmm. Someone would say, I long for the moment when I would be like Christ. So even if you die in Christ, if you have been martyred for Christ, I want to encourage you to remain faithful. Mm. For that great getting up morning, when Christ should come to take his redeemed with him, even though we die, I know we will hear his voice. Yes. And the Bible says we will come forth. Okay? But 
while time lingers, let us continue spreading this message. This message, the Bible says, and this gospel shall be preached, shall be preached into all. all the world for a witness unto so all, all nations, nations, and, and then, then shall, shall the end come. come. Let us get on board and let us start spreading this message. This third angel message. The message is Jesus won, Satan loses. Yes. And we are on the winning side. We have read Amen. the last chapter of the book. The Bible says, And I, John, saw a new city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. We will be in that city. What about you? I hope that you'll make your calling and election sure. So on that great getting up morning, you'll be counting worthy to go home with Christ. May God bless you. And as you go into a new week, I pray that you'll allow God to walk with you. Okay? Don't hold God's hand. Let God hold your hand. And ask him to lead you. Always remember now, the, the lesson brought up that we can't pray for one month. Okay? We commit ourselves daily unto God because the Bible says, sufficient unto this day is the evil thereof. May heaven bless us as we continue living for him. And remember now, if you don't have this book, The Great Controversy, you can check any Adventist church next, we're close to where you live, and I promise you, you can get it, okay? And this book have real, real information, some serious information where we can be close. When we read it, we can be closer drawn to God. May heaven bless Amen. us as we continue living for him.